you're living paycheck to paycheck. 30 minutes from now, you have $18.9 million cash. What do you do? Turns out stealing the money was the easy part. In the bustling city of Los Angeles, a grand scheme was brewing on a seemingly ordinary day in 1997. Alan Pace, a regional safety inspector at Dunbar Armored, was at the center of it all. By day, he was a diligent employee. By night, he was a calculating mastermind with dreams far beyond the confines of his job. With his deep knowledge of the facility's operations, Pace meticulously planned what would become the largest cash heist in U.S. history. This record stood until the Easter Sunday heist of 2024. No mastermind can execute a grand heist alone, and Pace was no exception. He recruited five of his childhood friends, each with a specific skill set that would prove invaluable. Each man had his role, from logistics to muscle, and together they formed a crew that would soon make headlines. Under the guise of old friendships, the group convened, discussing their plans in hushed tones at backyard barbecues and late-night gatherings. The camaraderie of shared history gave them confidence, but it was Alan's insider knowledge that would make the difference. On the night of September 12, 1997, the city slept unaware of the drama unfolding in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. The crew, dressed in black and brimming with adrenaline, assembled at a house party to establish an alibi. They laughed danced and mingled, giving no hint of the monumental crime they were about to commit. Shortly after midnight, they slipped away from the party. Allen used his keys to gain access to the Dunbar facility on Mateo Street. He had been recently fired for tampering with company vehicles, but he still had his keys, and his knowledge of the security system was impeccable. He had timed the security cameras and identified their blind spots. The robbers waited in the staff cafeteria, ambushing the guards one by one as they took their lunch breaks. The vault was left open on Friday nights due to the large quantities of money being moved. This was Allen's golden opportunity. Rushing the two vault guards, the robbers managed to subdue all employees with duct tape before they could signal any alarms. They did not fire a single shot. In a matter of 30 minutes, the crew had loaded $18.9 million into a waiting U-Haul truck, knowing exactly which bags contained the highest denominations and non-sequential bills. They even took the recording devices for the security cameras. With the loot secured, the gang returned to the house party, blending back in with the guests as if nothing had happened. The police quickly realized it was an inside job and scrutinized Pace due to his recent firing, but they found nothing concrete. Investigators at the depot only discovered a plastic taillight lens matching a U-Haul truck, but that lead went cold. For six months, the gang laid low, avoiding any extravagant spending. They were patient, methodical, and cautious, but eventually, the temptation to enjoy their newfound wealth became too great. They began laundering the money, a process as complex and risky as the heist itself. Laundering $18.9 million is no small feat. The crew enlisted the help of David Matsumoto, a Los Angeles immigration attorney, and his office manager, Joaquin Bin. For a hefty fee of $1 million each, Matsumoto and Bin structured the transactions by buying property and cars, investing in companies, and writing checks and W-2 tax forms for the robbers to give the impression they were earning wages. Pace also created front companies to launder more money, and in enlisted another man to buy property so that his name wouldn't be on any official documents. Boyd, through his father's company, laundered $177,000. Most of the robbers laundered cash through real estate, creating a web of transactions designed to obscure the money's origins. Two years after the heist, Eugene Lamar Hill Jr. made a critical error. He paid a friend, a real estate broker, with a stack of cash bound together with the original currency straps. The broker, suspicious of the neatly bound cash, went to the police. Detectives noticed that Hill had rented a U-Haul on the day of the robbery. Arrested, Hill soon confessed and named all co-conspirators. With Hill's confession, the dominoes began to fall. Law enforcement arrested the rest of the crew, piecing together the intricate details of the heist and the money laundering scheme. The seemingly perfect crime began to unravel. Alan Pace, initially claiming innocence, was arrested and sentenced to 24 years in prison on April 23, 2001, he was incarcerated at a federal correctional institution in Safford until his release on October 1, 2020. Eric Damon Boyd, due to his use of a gun and a prior criminal record, was sentenced to 17 years. The other robbers, pleading guilty, received sentences ranging
ranging from eight to 10 years. David Matsumoto and Joaquin Bin, indicted on 71 counts related to money laundering, were sentenced to 2.5 years each. Less than a third of the stolen money, approximately $5 million, was ever recovered. The remaining $13.9 million is still unaccounted for, a testament to the gang's skill in concealing their wealth. Laundering millions of dollars is a sophisticated process involving various techniques to avoid detection by authorities. Here's how the Dunbar crew might have approached it, hypothetically speaking. Smurfing. To avoid triggering bank reporting requirements, the crew could have made numerous small deposits under $10,000 into various accounts. This tactic, known as structuring, is designed to evade the $10,000 threshold that requires banks to file a currency transaction report with the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Cash-intensive businesses. Investing in businesses that handle large amounts of cash, such as car washes, laundromats, or bars, could help the crew mix illicit funds with legitimate earnings. By over-reporting daily revenues, they could gradually integrate the stolen money into the business's cash flow. Real estate investments. Real estate is a popular choice for money laundering due to its high value and potential for profit. The crew could purchase properties using cash or through complex financing arrangements, then sell them later, appearing as legitimate business transactions. Offshore accounts. Moving money to jurisdictions with strict banking secrecy laws, such as certain Caribbean countries or Switzerland, can make it harder for authorities to trace the funds. Offshore accounts and shell companies can obscure the true ownership of the assets. Cryptocurrency. Converting cash into cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin, provides a level of anonymity and makes it easier to transfer funds internationally. The crew could use online exchanges to buy cryptocurrency, then move it through various digital wallets to further hide the money trail. High-value assets. Purchasing luxury items like cars, jewelry, and art can help launder money. These assets can be resold, turning dirty money into seemingly clean funds. The crew could could also use straw buyers, people who make purchases on behalf of the criminals, to further distance themselves from the transactions. False loans and mortgages. Creating fake loan agreements or mortgages allows the crew to explain large sums of money as legitimate debt repayments. By setting up shell companies and creating fictitious business transactions, they could justify the movement of large amounts of money. The Dunbar armored heist is more than just a story of a daring robbery. It's a lesson in the complexity of crime and the sophistication required to evade detection. While the crew executed the heist with precision, their downfall came from their inability to keep a low profile and properly launder the stolen money. The heist also highlights the challenges law enforcement faces in tracking and prosecuting large-scale financial crimes. Despite their best efforts, only a fraction of the stolen money was ever recovered, and much of it remains hidden to this day. For aspiring criminals, the Dunbar high serves as a cautionary tale. The allure of quick wealth is tempting, but the consequences of getting caught far outweigh the rewards. For law enforcement, it's a reminder of the importance of vigilance and the need for sophisticated tools to combat financial crimes. And for the rest of us, it's a thrilling story that underscores the importance of ethics and integrity in all aspects of life. Crime may pay in the short term, but the long arm of the law eventually catches up. As the sun sets in the City of Angels, the tale of the Dunbar heist lingers in the air, a story of ambition, greed, and the ultimate price of crime. It's a reminder that in the game of life, playing by the rules is always the best strategy. Until next time, smash that like button and subscribe to Cash Money Bros, where money and knowledge grows.